All right, so uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for attending today's presentation, which is the best trading strategies using the Dark Pool app. I've had, you know, so many messages on social media from traders who have downloaded the app, but they don't know the best way to profit off this information. So I've decided to do this free webinar so I can help you do that. Over the next 45 minutes to about an hour, I will give you a little bit of information about myself, how I discovered the dark pool, because I'm sure many of you are probably curious about that. And then I'm going to walk you through the process right from getting a notification and how to trade it. Okay, I'm even going to go a little bit further to see if you even have the app. A lot of people think they have it and they don't have it. They didn't pay for it. So I'm going to show you how to quickly check for that as well. I'm going to give you some tips for day trading, and I'm going to give you some tips which are just for swing trading. But before I begin, um, you guys have to know that this presentation is for educational purposes only. Please hold back your questions. All right, until after the presentation, because I know I'm probably going to answer so many of them. And I don't want to jump around. But if I haven't answered your question by the end of the presentation, go ahead and put it there for me. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And if I don't answer it uh, within the time period, just shoot me an email. I will definitely answer it for you through the email. Okay, so let's begin. I'm just going to start with this slide. Right here. All right. Please, ladies and gentlemen, yep, I need to warn you that the market is manipulated, but I'm going to show you how to profit off that manipulation. Um, please look this over carefully. This presentation today is for educational purposes only. Please paper trade until you have mastered the process. Once you have uh, paper traded consistently, for a couple of weeks, then you can move on to trading with real money. You start small and you work your way up, okay, slowly. If you can make money on 100 shares, you can make money on 200. Then you bump it up to 400, 600, 800, 1,000. Um, years ago when I started trading stocks back in the 90s, I was um, really comfortable with 500 shares and I used to take about 30 positions overnight and I was comfortable. My traders around me, and I'm gonna actually show you those guys today, this is crazy, I'm gonna show you those guys. My traders around me used to trade 1,000 to 5,000 share lots, and they used to call me names, okay? Call me a piker, come on stuff, bump it up, peer pressure. So one day I decided I was gonna bump it up. I bumped it up to like 1,000 shares, and I was petrified. I just wasn't used to risking so much on each position. And again, I had about 30 swings, overnight. I'm going to show you what that looked like. Actually, I have a video from back then I'm going to show you. And I wasn't trading properly. I was like, I wasn't letting stocks go and hit their targets. I was getting out fast. I was a wreck. And I realized it's just not for me. I bumped it back down to 500 and I was trading great again. It doesn't matter, you know, how much money you have. Okay. Um, it's about what you feel comfortable with. Okay, that's really the most important thing is what you feel comfortable with. So you'll figure that out. If you're doing options, you start with two contracts, you work your way up to four contracts, to eight, to 10, to 20, doubling. Soon as you're not trading properly, I want you to bump it back down again. And that's where you stay. And that's just your risk tolerance. And that's really what I learned over the years. So again, it doesn't really matter, you know, how much money you have, it's how you feel when you're trading. All right, so um, I started out in 1994. How many of you were trading in 1994? Anybody here? 1994, yes, oh, a couple of you, awesome. All right, well, that's when I learned that the tape never lies. Yeah, the tape never lies. I started out as an assistant to one of the best traders at uh, Schoenfeld Securities, which was the largest prop firm in New York. You probably recognize that if you live on Long Island. Yeah, the big mirrored building. And um, 
I knew absolutely nothing about trading, really the best thing that ever happened to me, because uh, I sat in the million dollar room at Schoenfeld Security. I mean, does it get any better than that? I started out as an assistant to one of the best traders at this firm. His name was Scotty. And Scotty taught me everything. But the best thing that happened to me is they sat me in front of this computer called an Instanet machine. So Instanet is an institutional uh, agency only broker that also serves as uh, an independent equity trading arm of its parent Nomura Group. It executes trades for asset management firms, hedge funds, insurance companies, mutual funds, and pension funds. Headquartered in New York, the company provides sales trading services, trading technologies such as Newport EMS algorithms, trade cost analytics, commission management, independent research, and dark pool liquidity, you guys. That is the big word. Forget all the rest of the stuff that I just read to you. Dark pool liquidity. They sat me in front of the dark pool machine. It doesn't get any better than this. And I wanted to show you a picture of what this computer looked like. So I went ahead and I Googled incident machine. What? Did you guys lose my screen? Uh, hopefully we don't have too much tech. No. Some said yes, some said no. It's all good. Yeah, if you lose my screen, all you got to do is refresh. Oh, no sound? No, it's showing up here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, if some of you lost sound, okay, so I'm not going to refresh my screen. Thank you. Can you just leave, put a message if you lost sound just to refresh? And this is being recorded. Okay, so don't freak out. You can play this back. Um, and as many times as you want. I just don't want to stop unless I go down. Again, you know, tech has not been great since everybody's been on the internet. Yeah, it's been definitely uh, flaking out to say the least. So, yeah, if there's any issues, I'll just reboot mine if it's my end. If not, reboot yours. And again, we'll just make the best out of this. Okay. Yeah, refresh. Yeah, at least just the top arrows at the top of the screen. Just click on those and it will uh, refresh. So I tried to find some pictures online. So I Googled Instanet machine, okay? And I found a picture of myself there. Then I found a picture of my level two on one of my PowerPoints and another picture of myself. So I couldn't find a video. I mean, I couldn't find a picture um, but I do have video footage of me actually sitting in front of the incident machine back in the 90s. Do you guys want to see that? You want to see what my hair looked like back in the 90s? If anything, that's... <laughs> you got to see this. I actually found this video while I was moving from New York to Las Vegas two years ago. Yeah, I found it in my closet and I said, I'm an old uh, video recorder. I started playing the videotapes and I said, holy cow, I totally forgot that I captured myself um, at the prop firm trading. So check this out. Okay, let's just play it. There I am. Mind you, I was 24 years old. There I am. <laughs> Crazy hair. All right, so there's Frank to the left of me and Scotty, my boss, is to the right of me. And I'm actually typing right now on the keyboard for the Instanet machine. I just did a trade. There's my so screen. You could see how thick the computers were. And you can actually hear, if I make this louder. There's the Instanet right there. In the green glowing machine, there's my Bloomberg that I had in front of me. There's Alex, my clerk. We used to call across the table to do all of our orders, which was pretty cool. Uh, now look at my positions here, longs and shorts. And you could see they were in fractions back then. Yeah, where are those stocks? Are we still trading any of those stocks? And when I was recording, when they were recording it, we, uh, we made a joke and said, I wonder if you watch this years later, what the prices are going to be at. Go ahead and, you know, go ahead and do some recording on that page. So it's pretty funny. I don't think we're trading any of those stocks. I know. Isn't that crazy? There's that internet again and so forth. So, um, 
you know, I know there are a lot, I'm gonna just close this window for now and, and, and I'll open it up a little bit later. I know that there are a lot of people out there uh, trying to teach about the dark pool, but they don't have 26 years experience trading it. My dark pool knowledge has been in such high demand. Um, I'm definitely a lot more popular than I was in high school. I'll tell you that. I've been asked to speak at so many venues um, all around the United States, across Canada. Over the last seven years, I've taught over a million traders how to trade around the dark pool. Two years ago, I was asked to write a book all about it, which I think many of you have probably seen on uh, CNBC, Fox Business News. Now it's on Facebook, um, on YouTube. Have you guys uh, read my book? Anybody got my book yet? I do highly suggest you get it. It's free if you live in the US. Just go to darkpoolsecrets.com. All you have to do is pay for the shipping. However, if you live outside of the US, I can personally send you a copy. But you have to order it through my storefront at thedarkpools.com. And I will personally autograph it for you. Um, and we charge $49.99 for that. That covers shipping, handling, and the book. And again, I'm personally sending it out of the country. Uh, so if you like the book, uh, we could definitely get it to you. So what are the dark pools, right? 40% of all the volume in the market right now is being executed in the dark pool, this alternative exchange that's hidden. And I actually think it's much higher than 40%, but we'll just keep it at 40%. Now, there are a lot of trades that are being executed there, but we don't need to pay attention to all of them. I only pay attention to the sneaky, highly unusual ones. And that's where my 26 years of experience comes into play. If I'm not sending out any notifications to you in the morning on the app, it's because nothing unusual is going on or I might be doing a presentation like this one. And as soon as I'm done, I'll go through all the dark pull prints and I will get them out to you, the ones that you should pay attention to, okay? I'm gonna post the trades that are very special. We don't need to waste our time with all the other ones. So one of the most popular questions that I get asked is, Stephanie, who's on the other side of the trade? right? If somebody big is buying, isn't there somebody big selling? How many of you have asked yourself that question or are wondering? I mean, I can definitely see why many people over the years have asked me this question. Um, here's how it works. It could take hours or days for a massive order to be completed in the dark pool. We can't see that trade until it's fully completed. And that is why it's called the dark pool. It stays in the dark until it's completed. We could actually see them a lot of times doing it on the ECN book, on the NASDAQ book viewer. But once it's completed, they have up to three hours to report that trade. But many times it's 24 hours late. There's a special loophole that gives these guys permission to report a trade 24 hours late. I explain it in great detail in my book, but the short version is this. If a big institution does a trade from their London desk and they cross the trade with their New York desk, they don't have to report that trade for 24 hours later. And this is how I've spotted the last 17 out of 17 corrections before they have happened. Yeah, so here's how these trades work. There's one big guy on one side, let's just call him Goldman Sachs, okay? Goldman Sachs is buying or selling a specific stock in the dark pool. Millions of shares, okay? Billions of dollars worth. And it could take him a couple hours or sometimes a couple days. But guess who is on the other side of this trade? She is, he is. He is, he is, she is, he is. We are on the other side of the trade. Mm-hmm, but not anymore, okay? I've changed that. 
one trader at a time with my dark pull app. I want you guys to be on the right side, on Goldman Sachs' side of the trade. All right, so most of you have downloaded the app, right? So now what do you do? So here you have the first screen that you see. If you click on the menu bar, right here there are three lines top left corner. It'll bring you to this page right here. I want you to go to the settings page and check and see what your current application version is. And also it's going to tell you if your purchase is confirmed because a lot of people think they have it, but the purchase didn't go through. Okay. So that's the key is to check and make sure first. Now <clears throat> you don't need to go there. If you go to, if you want to buy a subscription, it's right on the homepage, buy a subscription, but you can also check your subscription right there as well on the first page that pops up with the app. All right, so the next step is to go to the Dark Pool Stock Whisperer feed. So if you press on the Stock Whisperer feed, you will get all of my notifications right here. Now, if you're not seeing the last one, which is happening right now until we fix it, it will refresh automatically. But right now, you have to swipe down with your finger. Okay, and you'll get the latest notifications instantly. So, if you click on one of the whispers, like here's the spy whisper, for April 23rd, and you press it, you will get all the details. That's where I put bullish above 282, my targets, and then bearish below 277.50 with all of my targets. Now, some of you may not even know what bullish above or bearish below means, so I'm just gonna take a moment and go over that. So what does bullish above mean? It means you're taking a long position. It could be a stock, could be an option, it could be futures, yet you're going long. And bearish below means we're gonna go short. Do not front run these levels, okay? They are picked very carefully. They are lines in the sand. I may change that level Okay, I may change that level due to a new print that has come in. So many times I have my bullish above bearish below levels for the SPY in the morning, but then all of a sudden we get like today, we got 3 million prints coming in at 281. So guess what? I changed my levels. Go with the new levels because this is based on new price action coming in right now. All right, let's move on to this next slide. So when it comes to pictures, once I'm done with, the, with mapping out um, in the morning, I, you know, I come in really early, by the way, as many of you noticed. I come in early at about 3 a.m. my time, 6 o'clock uh, New York time, and I start mapping out the trades. Once I'm done with half of them, the major ETFs and the futures, I will take a picture. So you'll see trade setup picture. When you see that, you press for the details and then it'll show you a dotted line with the stocks that are in the picture. If you press on those stocks, you're going to get this picture. All right, this is from April 24th. Now, once I'm done with all of the mapped out trades, I record the whisper video and I do that live in my trading rooms. You actually get to watch me mapping it out every morning as well. Once I do that, I will put on the app Dark Pool Whisper of the Day video. Press on that, you'll get those same dotted lines. And then press on the details below the dotted lines and you will get the Dark Pool Whisper of the Day video right there. Tap to unmute it and press it to play it. 
Okay, so now that we know the logistics of how to press on everything, we're gonna get to how to use this information to trade. And I'm sure you guys wanna know that, right? How do I trade this? Okay, so I wanna take a poll. What kind of trader are you? Okay, so the first one is gonna be day trader. Oh, hold on, we're gonna take a poll. You don't have to put it there. Swing trader, and I will trade anything. <laughs> okay, that is a uh, day trader and swing trader. I'll just hold on, everybody's, no, 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 I want you to take the poll, hold on. Send the poll, it's anonymous, I won't know what you do. Your secret's safe to me. I'm just curious of the people showing up here. what the parameters are because you can use it for both but I have to show you how to do that a lot of people make um, some mistakes that could easily be uh, tweaked so let's just finish I see some people are still voting all right they're still coming in Two sixty. All right, we're gonna stop and post the results. So we have seventeen percent day traders, twenty-eight percent swing traders, and fifty-five. So half of you do both. Perfect. Okay, so you're gonna definitely want to know um, how to trade both. So that's perfect. Let's start with day trading. Day trading one oh one. All right. So every morning I post a daily dark pull whisper trade setups for you. And you're probably wondering, you know, how do I do this? What tools am I using? So there are seven tools that I use to formulate my mapped out trade setups. And here they are. The first thing I look for is pre-market volume. Is there anybody here today that has software that is not giving you pre-market trade data? not giving you pre-market volume. Anybody here have software that you can't see what the SPY is doing at four in the morning Eastern? Five, six, seven, eight. Terry, you? It's time, if you don't, it's time to change your software. Yeah, you have to get something where you can see the data. Okay, you're at a complete disadvantage. You have a blindfold on and everybody else can see the trades. This is my secret to finding um, the whispers that I pick. I want to find stocks that have 100,000 shares of volume because it gives me clues. Number one, it's a hot stock today. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a mover. They're already piling in early. It's going to be a mover. The next thing I can see is where the computers are loaded to buy and where they're loaded to sell. And this is how I get my levels for you, bullish above and bearish below. The second thing I look at are pivots. Pivots, yes, pivots are phenomenal if you're using the best ones. So I'm pretty sure most of you know Person's Pivots, John Person. There's John and I at the New York Traders Expo. I was interviewing him. I've interviewed him several times. He's a super nice guy. He was a floor trader back in the day. And what the floor traders did was they used pivots to decide when they were going long and when they were going short. So they used the pivot point, and here's the formula right there for you, the pivot point, which was yesterday's high, yesterday's low, yesterday's close, and they added those up and divided by three and got a level, a price. And if we were above that, they went long, and if we went below it today, they went short. And it's phenomenal. And then they have S1 levels. That is the pivot times two minus the high. S2 is the pivot minus the high minus the low. Yeah, and those are support below the pivot. And then there are resistance above the pivot. Now the best part is computers are trading off of these levels. And I'm sure some of you have noticed that some of my targets 
are just right on point. They go right to that level and pull back again or pull up again. And it's because I'm using John Person's formula as targets, okay? Targets, because I know computers are gonna sell when we go up to R1, and I know the computers are gonna buy when we go down to S1. They're so good and they're free. You don't have to pay for them. You can get them on Charles Schwab. You can get them on Thinkorswim. You can get them on a lot of different software platforms, but they are really phenomenal. Now, I use another set of pivots. So anytime you see, I'll get to that in a second, but anytime you see, oh, well, you know what? I'll show you that in a minute, um, the abbreviations. But I use another set of pivots called Camarilla Pivot Boss. And it's just another set of computers that trades really well on these levels. They're just amazing. And in my whisper, okay, here is April 24th's daily whisper. This was just this Friday. I wanted to use something that just happened. And um, you see my abbreviations to the right? Right, PP, so anytime you see them on the whisper PP, that's John Person's pivot. Anytime you see S1, that's John Person's S1, S2, S3, R1, R2, R3. Anytime you see CR, that's Camarilla, Pivot Boss, and that's Resistance. Or CS, Camarilla, it's a Pivot Boss support. All you have to know, it's a line in the sand where there's gonna be support or resistance. It's a good place to take your profit. DP is the dark pool, and I'm using old dark pool levels, or it could be a recent dark pool level. That's even better, because they like to play print pong. So if they were selling a stock yesterday at $40, and we pull all the way up to it today, the odds are they're probably gonna sell some more at 40. But if it goes above it, that's gonna be bullish. They're no longer selling at 40. So I use books, ECN books. This is where institutions are hiding their orders, okay? Yeah, hiding them. They're not executed yet. They're loaded to buy and sell. So we have the ARCA book and the INET. You know what the INET book is? The Instanet, okay, that's the green glowing dark pull machine that used to be in front of me in the 90s. Now NASDAQ bought it, and it's called the NASDAQ Book Viewer, or you may see INET on your platform if you have it. Mine actually says INET, but it's the same thing as a NASDAQ Book Viewer. And I can see where Goldman Sachs is loaded to buy and sell all day long, and it gives me a huge advantage. So in the morning, you will see me put, you know, there's a seller or a buyer on ARCA. Yeah, those are key levels that I'm using for my bullish above and bearish below levels. But I'm just letting you know, hey, there was a buyer this morning pre-market, you know, at, at $40.20 or a seller at $40.50 and so forth. So yeah, if you please hold your questions until the end, I would be happy to answer them. I might answer them before I'm done, okay? So just keep that in mind, I'm not ignoring you, I will answer afterwards. So what, I'll, what I pay attention to for the futures especially in the morning, for those of you that trade futures, is the pre-market volume bars on a five minute chart. I search through that, I see the highest volume bars and I use those for my bullish above, bearish bull levels, but I also combine them with these pivots Yep, and I also use moving averages, okay? Moving averages on my daily chart, and I also use major levels that computers are trading off of in general. The $5 increments, the dollar increments, the 50 cents. I combine everything, all of this, okay? To bring you these levels. If you wanna learn how to do this yourself, this is what I teach you in bootcamp. Yeah, if you take my boot camp, you can, I'll teach you from A to Z and you'll be able to do this on your own. But a lot of people don't want to do that. They just want me to do all the work for them. So I'm just explaining to you, you know, how I get these levels. So you see bullish above 281 for Friday on April 24th. 
Okay, coincidentally, that's today's level two. My target 281.93 was a Camarilla resistance. The second target 282.50 was John Persons R1. And we went up to about 283.75. So here's what it looks like on the app for that day. Once you press on the details and there it is. So you can see, I'm gonna just draw a, a line in the sand on that 281 bullish above and this is a great thing for you guys to do on your charts this way you don't have to go back you actually have the visual on your chart put on a five minute and you'll know i'm not going to go long until it breaks above 281 unless stephanie gives me another alert about the spy giving me a new level all right so um you can see that when it went above it yeah it went all the way till the end of the day and then continued higher into Monday. Look what happened at the same time it broke below 281. Can anybody tell me? What, what is that? What spike is that at the bottom of my chart? Does anybody know? Volume. Yes, volume is the gasoline that we need to go up the hill. Put the pedal to the metal. So when things are breaking above my level, I want to see volume coming in and I want to see really good volume higher than the candle before it that tells me there are buyers coming in and we're going to break above this level but I wait to enter until we break above the level now as a day trader you do not want to trade the first 10 to 15 minutes the market is open you can see right then and there we spiked above 281 and then we came down that is what we call the shakeout period, okay? We don't want to trade the first 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. The best time to day trade is 9.45 to 10.50 Eastern. Yeah, once we hit 11 o'clock, guess what happens? The big analysts at Goldman Sachs, we call them the Armani's, right? The Armani suits, they go out for lunch. So some really nice restaurants. They have steak, martinis, you name it. And while they're gone, they leave these guys in charge. We call them the minions. They are their assistants that get paid not a lot of money. <laughs> and, but they get charged, okay? They get a small base salary, but they get charged, they get a bonus, okay? Every time they stop you out during lunch. Yes. They do. And so what do they do? They run, the, they run the stocks up. They know everybody's out for lunch and put stops in, right? You go out for lunch, oh, I'm gonna put a stop. If it breaks above this level, I'll get stopped out, or breaks below this level, I'll get stopped out. And um, the minions come in and they see your stops. So what do they do? They bring it up, stop you out. They bring it down, stop you out. They bring it up, stop you out. They it's like it's all over the place. Don't trade against the minions okay they will take you out you don't want to trade with them about two o'clock the armani's come back they're happy they had a couple martinis they had a nice steak lunch the best times today and swing trade are really after that two o'clock back in the day that guy frank that sat next to me in that video he used to yell out every day all right two o'clock rally time there's something about two o'clock and I'm not saying it happens every day, but two o'clock, we just like to start rallying. I don't know, they come back in, time to buy, or, or if the market is in bearish mode, it's time to sell off at the end of the day. They lift it up and then we sell off. All right, so these are the best times to trade. You wanna watch volume, that's really important. So another question that I get asked is, what do retracements mean? You see them in my mapped out trades. You know, what are these things? So I'm going to explain it. So here we have Intel. Bullish above 57, and this is from Friday. Bullish above 57. Uh, target 57.25, 57.50. 57.74, that's a Camarilla resistance. 58 is S2, 
okay? Moving up, because they gapped it down. You might, guys remember Intel's earnings came out? I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. They gapped it down, right? So we were trading it all the way back up again to S2 and a retracement to the four EMA. So retracement. It's usually a trade that is going against the trend. Yeah, which is not a, a great thing to do, but when there's a lot of room on gappers, yeah, those are great day trades. Really good for, I wouldn't swing it, but they're great day trades. Um, and it means it's a short term trade back to support or resistance. So on April 24th, my first whisper on Intel was again after earnings, it gapped down. And here is a picture from the actual whisper video. And I can actually just show you part of that video, I think. Hold on a minute. See if I can do that. Okay, because my trade was the retracement. So you can just watch the video. Here, I'm gonna play this. 55 level, a 200 simple moving average is right there. As a swing trader, just zoom in on that red line. Yep, as a swing trader, uh, long-term holders, yep, they will sell if it goes below that line. So today though, for a day trade, we're gonna be bullish above 57 for a retracement trade. It might retrace that right shoulder before moving back down again. Um, and we're gonna be bearish below 55, 75. Yeah, but again, for swinging, and you can see I did put that in here, this 200 simple moving average, and there's a gap fill, yeah. So if we do close below that in the future, uber bearish. AMD has earnings next. All right, so I talked about the retracement and that's exactly uh, what happened to this four EMA on the daily chart. It's a very popular pattern. When we move far away, it wants to come back, hit it before moving down again or going above it. So that was the trade, retracement back to resistance. And you can see that's exactly what happened that day. Is it retraced back there? And so did anybody take this trade? Here was the daily chart right there. Anybody here? Greg, you did? Well, here is the perfect scenario, you guys. Above, yeah, the 57. And look, look at that volume that came in. Guess who took it? J Jay the trader, he's here today. He bought it here. This is from my trading room. The timestamp is, is Pacific time. So it's 9.43. He waited the first 10 minutes and jumped in and so did Nathan in my trading room. And so did Traveler. And you can see they took their profits. Jay actually made 54 cents. Nice job, Jay. Awesome retracement trade. Okay, so sometimes I get questions and people say, well, Steph, what do I do if the trade um, already passes the whisper level? You know, how do, what do I do? Or it moves down first, you know, can I get into it at a different level? So if you know what you're doing and you know how to trade, yes, absolutely. You know what levels you can enter. I teach all of this, but I'm going to teach you something today on AMD, same day. So in the morning, I looked at person's pivots and all the different pivot lines, and I was bullish above 55.80. Target 56, which was Camarilla resistant, 56.20. Yeah, that was person's pivots right about there. Okay, it was a retracement trade. Um, two person's pivots. So when we're below that pink line and I put retracement, yeah, to move up to it. This was the trade. But what happened was, is it moved down first. You know, when I was looking at the pre-market activity back here, okay, this is what I saw early in the morning. And so that's why my bullish above level was 55.80, all the way over here. But did you have to wait? That was the middle of the day. Did you have to wait for that? Not necessarily, okay? If we pull down to a support level, which we did, we pulled down to S2. Let me just zoom in on that for you. Um, if we pull down and it forms 
a bullish accumulation pattern at the bottom. You can absolutely get in if you know about Wyckoff. You guys see the W in my logo? That is not a coincidence. No, that is one of my favorite bottom patterns, the W. Yeah, and Richard Wyckoff called it an accumulation pattern. Yeah, so you want to buy at the bottom when it forms a W. All right, the accumulation patterns are either a rounded bottom or an inverted head and shoulder pattern, sometimes called a W. And here you have the W. Down, up, down, up. And what Wyckoff teaches is there is a level of resistance called the creek right there. And once we jump the creek, that's where you want to enter. And you can see volume surged right before it jumped the creek. Everybody get that? And I use the major $55 level to enter. The $5 increments are super, super strong. That's always a really good level when it goes above it. Yeah, and I do teach all these strategies. There's a lot of strategies, you guys. I can't teach you everything about how to day trade today, but these are um, the most popular questions that I get asked. If it moves above the whisper level, I go to the next major level and I make sure there's no pivots here. And you know, again, these are all things um, that I teach you in boot camp. We do 70 live trading hours. I walk you through hundreds of trades live. But I want to move into swing trading using the dark pull app. So even though my dark pull app is primarily used for day trading, I am mostly an overnight swing trader. I focus on massive prints or the holy cow prints, right? The holy moly prints like these guys. Back on January 22nd, if you recall, I posted GSLC. Holy cow, massive 6 million print, 66.99. Bullish above 67.25, bearish below 66.75. I wrote it's a slow vehicle, don't trade it, but look at the top holdings to trade. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Google, Intel, and Walmart. You guys, this was before the crash. This is how the dark pool is sneaky and they sell billions of dollars, okay, in different ETFs that most people don't know about, but we do. And I hope you guys took advantage of this information. If not, don't worry, you're here now and you will catch the next one. But here's what happens. The dark pool comes in, you can see the spike of volume on the 22nd, but you don't want to enter right away to something like this because it splashes. And they usually splash it in the opposite direction of the true move. Do I get splashed sometimes thinking that it might be buying and I get in on the long side? Yes, but guess what? When it goes below it, right here after the splash, they're selling. They're not gonna bring it down below that massive print, you know, unless they were selling it after a couple weeks. Okay, it was a sell. If it was really buying six million, we'd be going up making higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low. This thing would have went up to 75, 80 if it was buying. But the biggest, the bigger the print or the more unusual the print, the bigger and longer the splash usually. Okay, it's not a... Uh, a perfect scenario every time. But the most important thing that I could teach you today is to never go to sleep on the wrong side of the prints. Okay? Never go against Goldman Sachs. Wait. Don't jump in the day the big prints happen unless you're going to put on a strangle. And I teach you how to do that, um, you know, in class. Um, but if you're going to go directional, that's it. So, you know, people ask me, hey, Steph, did you see the dark pool settling at the top? Absolutely. Okay. This was one of them. Here was another one on Halliburton. Holy moly, 
massive 7.5 million print 2465 bullish above 2465 bearish below 2550 um oh i'm sorry bullish above 2550 bearish below 24 the print was at 2465 now these levels bullish above bearish below are buffers for the splash yeah to try to uh, not get you into it on the wrong side. So you can see that Halliburton never went above 2550. So it worked. Sometimes you might get splashed a little bit. And again, it happens. Get over it. Get on the right side because the right side is going to be a massive trade. Even if you lost a little bit on the initial trade, you thought it was buying, you went in, you got out. Guess what? You made a million more percent on the short side, as you can see. Here's our entry, and down it went, and a lot of us in our room took this trade. Here's another one on Ford. Now this was after it already moved down. It gapped down, and then we got this uh, dark pull print. Holy moly, massive 25 million print at 828. I actually took a poll in my room to ask my traders if it was buying or selling. And most of them, they thought it was buying. They did, but you know what we did? I said, you know what guys? I don't know, only because there was a lot of selling in so many other stocks and all the major indexes. I mean, we were bearish, but I said, why don't we just put a strangle on? So we did, it was five cents, five dollars a contract, you guys. We went 50 cents out of the money. We bought the 850 calls and the 750 puts. I did a presentation for Lightspeed not too long ago with this trade, and you can see it was insane, okay? Those puts went up so much, and they were five cents. The option chain was not prepared. They didn't know a big move was coming. I don't pay attention to unusual options activity. I don't care about that, okay? Those prices are already high. I want unusual dark pool activity on the stock and then I wanna catch the option chain off guard, dirt cheap and take advantage of it. And that's exactly what we do all day long in my room. So it splashed a tiny bit and then it crashed. So I wanna show you a recent trade that we took on ET. Massive prints came in, 8.3 million on April 15th. And if you clicked on the details, okay, bullish above 625, bearish below 550. Now when it comes to swing trading, I do like to know a little bit about the company. Now this is an oil and gas related equipment and services. I wanna make sure the earnings are not coming out because I'm getting into option trades and I wanna make sure I don't pick the expiration where the earnings are coming out because the IV, the volatility, is going to be high. They're expecting a big move that week. They pad the options, they're super expensive. We don't wanna play that game. So we wanna get in when they're dirt cheap, okay? And that's exactly what we did. This was a textbook swing. So here's my post in my room. You guys get that post on the app, but up top is what it looks like if you're in my live trading room in our alert tab. I copy and paste it. So here was the dark pool and it splashed for one day. And here is the best swing trade you can take. Overnight momentum swing trading. Closing strong on higher volume than the day before and above the prints. Folks, it doesn't get better than this. So you can see the chart from that day. It was moving up and up and up all day long. Now, even though I was watching this, I was watching a lot of other stocks and, I'm, and I just forgot about it. But thank goodness for my traders. You know, when you teach a few hundred people your strategy, guess what? You know what happens? People ask me, why do you teach, Stephanie? Like, why don't you just trade by yourself? Why, you know, why, why do you do this? And I'm going to show you why right now. They call out amazing trades, and I made an entire month's salary on this trade, as I'm going to show you. Okay? So in my room, Keith C. called it out right here. 
And I love you, Keith, if you're here. Yeah, they, we all do. We work as a team because we need 400 eyes to find these trades. Look, there's a lot of prints. We're monitoring a lot of stocks. When things go above levels, we have a system where my traders call them out. And we call out our trades, our entries, our exits, as you're going to see. I didn't have time to post everybody's. There are so many trades we took on this. But I, I just wanted to capture mine, and I captured quite a few of the traders in the room, but not all of them. There were just hundreds, okay? So Keith bought the 650 calls April 24th. You can see he went out a week, and he went about 50 cents out of the money, a little bit less. And this is what I taught him to do. This is the best strategy. You always want to buy out of the money because when they go to at the money, the ROI is the best in the entire world. Now, you don't want to just do that on anything. Oh, I think Facebook's going to go up. Let me buy these out of the money calls. No, you don't ever want to do that unless you're trading massive dark pool prints. You have to know a move is going to come soon and your options are going to go from out of the money to closer to the at the money or at the money or sometimes in the money. But the best ROI is, at, is out of the money to at the money. So Keith jumped in them and then I wrote, I like those joining you and I bought the 650 calls and guess what? Everybody chimed in. The speculator, Chris, everybody's got nicknames in my room, most people. Chris bought the same ones I did and so did Paul the alien. He's here today, next week. They were next week's. So this was Friday. No, 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 I'm sorry, April 17th. Yeah, it was a Friday. Right, and we like to go out and give it some time, obviously. One week is all it needs for this stock to move. Um, and Jamie jumped in, except she bought the seven calls. She went a little bit further out, which not necessarily, she, she probably should have bought the 650s, which she probably realized afterwards, but I'm sure she probably did pretty good with those. Uh, Johnny D bought the 650 calls, same ones. Lil followed us as well. We're not done. Nathan jumped in, Simone, and, and Keith writes, nice, we're pushing up ET. Now, we're not pushing it up, okay? People will sometimes say, oh, you're a bag pusher, you're pushing up. We don't, I don't push it up. Did you see that 8 million print on ET? Okay, that is what's pushing the stock up, not our little option trades that are out of the money. We're not pushing it up. So bad boy jumped in, and that, but we joke about it. You know, you guys are pushing up ET, but we're not. Um, Stephanie jumped in. Um, all my traders jumped in. So what we like to do is find something that is going to have a really big move, and we like to do what I call the Java pit roll. So it's something that I came up with. It's not a role that you might have heard of in options. If you take another option classes, this is not that role. First of all, nobody trades options like I do. They don't buy out of the money, low delta. It's unheard of. The reason we do it is because we have a massive edge called the dark pool. That's why we were able to do it very successfully and we make a lot of ROI doing it. So what we do is when ET, the stock moves up, okay, and hits like the next big resistance level, like right there, okay? It came all the way the next day on Monday to about 640. So what we like to do is we like to sell those 650 calls, which you can see I did right there. I made 50% ROI on half, and you can see my traders are starting to sell. And then I like to roll into the next higher calls, the seven calls, okay? So if I sold my 650 calls, for a higher price, I like to buy um, less contracts on the second roll and cheaper so that I'm always going to make money no matter what. And I keep doing it until the last trade doesn't work out. And so you can see my traders were doing that. We're getting out of their ET positions here, 80%, 90% ROI. The next day, it continued to go up, as you can see. And then I rolled, I wanted more time. So I rolled into the next week's seven calls for May 1st. And you can see the next day, it continued to go higher. All right, we're at 675 and I have all these seven calls. So those seven calls are going up a lot. 
And so I got out of half of them, making, making 40% ROI. And then I got out of another quarter, making 70% ROI. And then I sold the seven calls for that week, break even. Sometimes we run out of time. This was April 23rd on Thursday. So I made a decision to get out, break even, because we were still out of the money. And instead, I wanted to stay in the position. I rolled into the 750 calls for the next week, which was my fourth roll. And so did Keith. This time, he followed me. And this is really what happens in the room. We rolled into those. And we started to move up higher. As you can see, it spiked up around 11 o'clock. I got out of half of my 750 calls, 90% ROI, next week expiration. And then I rolled into the eight calls next week. And then I got out of another quarter of my 750 calls, 175% ROI. And I told everybody I'm out of my 750 calls for next, uh, next week. I'm only holding my eight calls now for next week. I'll summarize my position. And then I bought, oh, sorry, this is out of whack. Um, I got out of half of my calls, and then I got back, back into them. We had a big uh, news announcement with Guild that day. If you remember, the whole market went up, and then it crashed. Yeah, so we used that to our advantage, to buy them back cheaper. Yep, on the crash. So I bought back those eight calls cheaper. I sold them into that pop, and then the news came out. So ET, <laughs> we have a little joke. The next morning on the 24th on Friday, you can see pre-market, it started to go up and at the bell. So Kahuna in my room, his name is Brian, we call him the Kahuna. He starts posting up pictures of ET and we, you know, we're making jokes that it was going to the moon. And uh, oops, I forgot to put that in. <laughs> I got out of half of my calls, 13 cents, paid eight cents, got out of another quarter on that bounce, another quarter. Now I can show you a hundred more trades for my traders, but that would take all day. Um, but you can see I kept rolling into the 850 calls, which I am currently in. Now I know many of you are probably really dizzy watching all these trades, so I created a scorecard for you. Ta-da! These are all the trades that I took using options off that massive print. Made 50% ROI, 70% break even, 70% ROI, 90%, 160, 50, 260, 287, 112. And I'm in the 850 calls. And if this trade doesn't work out, I'll stop. I'm not going to try to peg the top. I know everybody wants to peg the top. They get pissed off. You have exit-itis, okay? I'm not going to have exit-itis. I'm going to be happy when the last trade doesn't work out because look at all the trades that worked out. I probably wouldn't have taken all of them if I didn't just keep going until the last trade didn't work out. And I call out all of my trades in real time. In fact, during my meetings, I will go over trades, especially the afternoon meetings. I go over trades and I, and I tell the traders, oh, I really like these calls. And they end up getting in them before me by the time I can go and type it into the chat. They're already in it, especially Andrew. He always beats me in my trades. Um, but yes, I explain why I'm taking the trade. It's really important to educate my traders why I'm taking a certain trade. Why am I picking the strike? Why am I, t why am I picking this expiration? And why am I entering right now? Why am I exiting right now? This is how you learn how to trade. Because when I teach you, like Keith, guess what? He knew when to enter, and that's why I got in at the best time, because I taught him how to actually trade. They're not just following me. Yeah, when you're new, you're gonna follow along. But once you take the boot camp, okay, you're going to do this yourself. So the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to follow somebody or do you actually want to learn how to do this yourself so that if I ever go on vacation ever again, <laughs> you're going to be able to trade by yourself. Or if you want to pick a different stock to trade, you're going to know how to do this all by yourself. So again, I don't try to peg the top. I don't try to peg the bottom. I follow the dark pool. Every single trade I take is about the dark pool. I follow the prints, and if I find myself on the wrong side of the trade, I immediately reverse my position. 
It's okay to wake up on the wrong side of the tape, but it's not okay to stay there. Don't trade with your ego. Stay humble or the market's gonna humble you, all right? Discipline, discipline is the most important thing. Be disciplined, follow rules, and you can be successful. And remember, the market is always right, okay? Even when it's wrong, it's right. So you stick with it, okay? Don't watch the news, don't trade on fundamentals, trade on the tape and follow the dark pool. So I do wanna thank you for attending today's webinar on how to use the app. And I hope I was able to answer some of your questions that you've been having on how to use this app. We have some very exciting upgrades coming. Yep, the Android will have push notifications very soon. The Apple went first, and I'm sorry if you have an Android. It, they are working on it um, as soon as possible. They will have it done, okay? Please be patient. It's been a long process, and um, you know it's, it, it's hard when we're not the actual people. I'm not doing it myself. I actually have to have people that are doing it, and, um, and then we you know, have this pandemic going on right now, so that was a little bit um, difficult. Um, for some of the things that we had to do, but it's coming along. We have so much more that we want to upgrade on the app, but we just wanted to get it working, which it is now. Um, and I'm gonna answer your questions in a moment, but I'm sure some of you may be curious as to some other services that we offer. So I'm just gonna show you them briefly. If you don't have the Dark Pool app, okay, yeah, just go to um, your Apple Store or your Google Play Store, search the Dark Pool or the Stock Whisperer, it'll pop up with a W. And it's $19.99 a month. And you can go ahead and get it, All right? Um, for those of you um, who are fairly new to trading and the Dark Pool, we have launched a really fantastic newbie trading room called the Training Pit. And it's gonna teach you everything you need to know about how to get started. You know, we'll teach you how to set up your software, how to get the dark pool data feed, how to put those pivots on, how to set up your charts, how to get the ECN books. We'll give you tips to trading the whispers. Um, we'll teach you how to do beginner options, how to journal your trades, futures, so much more. We have four instructors, including, that includes myself. We do live presentations every single day, and they're recorded. If you can't attend them live, and they're usually this time of day, starting about 11 o'clock Eastern, because we all trade. And if you can't attend live, you just go into the room, in the room drive, and you download them. That day or the next day, we keep them there for the week. You can watch me every morning in that newbie trading room, map out the whisper of the day trades every morning. You hear me record it live. I share my screen all day. You get all the dark pool notifications in the room itself. So you can use a computer and get all these notifications. It's the same notifications you get on the dark pool app. Every Wednesday, I do a, a special presentation in the room on how to trade the dark pool. So the training pit is $99.97 a month. It's really easy to register, just go to the darkpools.com on the services page you'll see it you just click on it click here and you will get it i'll actually put the link the dark pools right here for you okay just go to the services and this this will pop up so i have another service that may be of interest to you guys also it's called dark pool insights it's a video newsletter. I share trades that I have taken recently to teach you strategies, like I just showed you. Um, and the best part is I look through all the dark pool activity from all week and I map out swing trades for you to take. I do this video on Saturday. So I wake up really early in the morning. It takes me about 10 hours to put it together. It's my homework for myself and I share it with you, but it's a, an educational PowerPoint presentation. Uh, it's a video, it's about 20 minutes long. And I give you about 
20 amazing swing setups every week to take. They are phenomenal. These, this week is really great. Um, I try to finish it on Saturday so you have all day Sunday to prep by putting it into your, um, your software. You can draw your trend lines, you can put the, the, the levels on there. Um, as a thank you for attending today's presentation, I'm gonna be giving you guys this week's Dark Pool Insights video so you can test it out, you can see how it worked, see if you could use it to trade off of, see if you like it. And if you like it, it's only $37 a month. Once you join and you become a subscriber, you can go back and watch all the previous insights. I have about a year's worth. You will learn so much. Oh my goodness. You will learn so much about how to trade just from these videos. So it's well worth it. Um, my traders really love it. Um, so you, again, try. You, we're gonna give you one free video today. We'll send it out later on to your email address that you registered and you can check it out for yourself. So a lot of people that are advanced traders wanna join me in my online trading room, the Java Pit. Yeah, I trade there live all day long. I showed you examples on that ET trade of what goes on in the Java Pit. Yeah, we call out all of our trades, all the dark pool, and so much more, um, so much more. I do two audio meetings a day, one before the market opens, and I share my screen, of course, all day long. The dark pool data feed is there, the news is there. Um, I never get off my chair. I never leave my desk until the market closes. I'm there to answer your questions, help you out with your trades. I mentor all of my traders. You know, I hate to see anybody losing money because they're not following the dark pool, the rules. So I'm there to tweak everybody. If you'd like more information on how you can join this room, just send me an email at stephanie at the stock whisperer. Let me just put that in here, at the stock. Make sure you spell it with an F. Dot com. And I would love to talk to you. See if the room is right for you. Okay, if you're right for the room, just to make sure that it's the right place for you. I mean, I've had people want to be in the room and they told me, well, my job, I can't be there. And I said, well, it's not the right thing for you. <laughs> this is for people that want to be active. Not every day, all day long, but most of the time. You know, if you're an active trader and you want to trade with me, this is, you know, definitely where you want to be. So I would like to answer some questions right now. So I'm going to open up my uh, webcam. And I'm sorry, what'd you say, Matthew? Stop, stop top of oh, I can't, yeah, that's why I asked for you guys to wait until the end. Um, but I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna start at the, the recent ones. Okay, so I'm gonna just start now. Um, and again, if I don't answer your question, don't freak out, we have a lot of people here. Just shoot me an email and I will gladly answer it, okay? So how much money to invest needing to join the Java Pit? So money to trade or to join the Java Pit? So shoot me an email and I will make an appointment and, and let you know, okay? Yeah, do I place stops to scale out? Um, I have levels that I scale out, yes, Bernie. As you saw in the example on ET, I scaled out of many of the trades. Steven, what do you do when you take a long trade due to a break above the bullish and then it breaks down below the bearish? I strangle it. That's what I do. Unless it's too expensive to strangle, yeah, then I won't. I'll just lose my initial. Now, all the trades I put on are out of the money, lottery ticket, very cheap. Yeah, cheap, cheap options. Now, I, I understand if I get in early, if we just had the big print, you know, um, yesterday, there's a big chance I could get splashed, so I'll dip a toe in. I won't go in full blast till I definitely know they're buying or they're selling. So strangling, I did a, a fantastic uh, presentation for Lightspeed. Um, hold on a minute. I think I actually have the link here. Um, hold on, here it is, the YouTube video. 
I'm going to post it in the alert tab. It really shows you in great detail how to strangle, but it's buying calls out of the money and puts out of the money at the same time. And I walk you through that process in that video that I just posted for Lightspeed. Okay, recently, I did that in March. Um, let's see. When you trade the IWM, where do you put your stop loss on your first trade when you take profit at the target? Yeah, so I never like to lose. Uh, once I take a profit, I don't lose on the second half. I'll get out break even. I always have a stop and break even. I put that in right away. Yeah, good question. Okay, so Jana, um, you touched on this a bit, but I'm still wondering how to trade stocks that already blow through levels. Okay, uh, the first 10 minutes or so. Yep. Yeah, so this is what I teach in boot camp, Jenna, how to find the best levels to enter and exit. We go to the next level and then we watch for volume coming in. It's all about volume with Tesla. It could be the next pivot. It could be the next major level computers trade off of. It could be a moving average. And when it goes above with volume, we enter. Okay, but it's a good question. But this is things I need to really teach you live. Look. I can, I can show you a PowerPoint, um, you can read my book. And, and while you're gonna learn things, there's nothing like having me get you in and get you out of trades live to show you and teach you. you know, any profession that you guys pick, right? Engineer, a teacher, a surgeon, a lawyer, you name it. What do you do to prepare for that career? Well, you're in a somebody's assistant, right? You watch somebody else doing it and you learn live. You don't just read a textbook and then go into surgery, right? You read your textbooks, you take your tests, you learn all about that, and then you study under a surgeon and you watch him perform surgery over and over and over again. And then finally, he hands you the scalpel. Well, that's me, okay? I'm the surgeon handing you the scalpel as soon as I know that you know what you're doing. But the problem is, people don't go through that process. They just take the scalpel and they just start, you know, doing that to the market. So it's really important if you want to make this your career, you treat it like one and you're trained properly. You know, I spent two years, you guys, two years, all right, studying Scotty's assistant. I watched him do, you know, hundreds of trades and then I just knew what to do. I watched him do every single scenario I knew how to trade. And so that's really the key. It's just that people are very anxious to make money. I got to make money right now and they're gambling and they end up losing it all. But if you take the time and invest it in yourself, in some education, and really learn from somebody that's doing it successfully, you're gonna do really well. So Bernie, some days these options move quickly. The other day I had only a couple of minutes to get out of Beyond. So I don't trade Beyond options, Bernie. I trade lower price stocks with you know two cent spreads. The maximum that I'll do is like five cent spread, all right? but I will do a two cent. So I don't, it's too crazy for me. I won't trade those, okay? Um, okay, so the best room for someone that works full-time. So if you're working full-time, Jonathan, doing something else, how are you gonna trade, right? You tell me, can I do your job when I'm doing my job? What do you, well, first of all, what do you do for a living? What's your job? So what are you like? What are you selling? Like, is your attention fully focused, or can you look at a computer, car? Oh, you can look at a. You can have your phone on. You can with an iPad um, log into our trading room. Yep. And where do you live? Do you live on the West Coast? If you live on the West Coast, you could do it. East Coast, uh, you may want to move to the West Coast. You could trade in the morning and then go to work. It's so much better and it's nicer. It's really nice over here. <laughs> so the next boot camp is May 18th. It's coming up. Yeah, we are. Oh my gosh. We're, yeah. Oh my gosh. We are less than a month away. Yeah, it's packed. We have a lot of people in it. The next one after that is August uh, 3rd. I think it's August 3rd. Um, yeah, so it depends. Uh, question, how far out for swing trading? It depends. What, what are my targets? Um, I was in USB um, overnight. Uh, I swung that off the dark pull prints that came in, as you guys saw on the app, 
posted that. It was also in my insights, Dark Pole Insights, you'll see uh, for this week. And um, I went to May 15th and, uh, and June options, 40 and 45 calls, and I killed it. I made 300% ROI on the May 15th calls. And so that's, you know, that's the key. Um, I can live out. I'm not going to show you the trades, but it, it's, they were awesome. So is the boot camp or the training pit better to start with? So Don, people do both of them together. The reason we created the training pit was people were scheduled to take um, the boot camp. And they came into the boot camp and they were not prepared. They didn't have their software. Um, they didn't have things set up right. They didn't know what an ECN book was. They didn't know options. I like just the beginning of options. You just really know the, we don't go into complex stuff. I don't trade complex, but they didn't know the beginnings of it. So we created this room so people can get prepped and then not feel overwhelmed in boot camp. They can just come in and start trading. So people do both. Um, I do send out notifications, yes, in the Java pit, it makes a cha-ching sound. So for example, here, test of the sound, hold on, you're going to hear it right now. Hear that? It's a little cash register. So if you're in the kitchen making food and you hear that, you want to come running out, <laughs> you don't have to come running, but you'll hear it and, and know that I just put an alert in. Okay. Um, no, the training pit is a separate subscription. It does not come with the Java pit. No, because you don't always, not everybody needs it, and you'll probably be in the training pit for just a couple months. Yeah, it should only take a couple months, and then you got everything down, and, and you're ready to um, take it to the next level. Or you may realize, like, maybe it's not for you. Look, not everybody's cut out to be a trader. And I'm brutally honest, and I hope I don't offend anybody at any time, but I will tell you, like, hey, John, or hey, Joe, this is not for you. You don't have the schedule. You're not disciplined. You're not studying. You're not, this is probably not the right career for you. Um, and, or if it is, I'm going to tell you, you know what? You're phenomenal. Let's, let's tweak you. Let's work on this. I know that you can be successful. You just have to work on X, Y, and Z. I am a trading coach. I'm a psychologist and I'm a trader. So all wrapped up into one, um, yeah, so the process of joining the, the, the trading room, the Java pit, is just shoot me an email. I will make an appointment with you and talk to you about it and see if it's right for you. Yeah, it's, it's a closed room. Uh, we like it that way. People just can't come in and out of it. Um, people make a commitment and really want to learn my system, and I will mentor you for the rest of your life. Um, I have people in my room for 10 years with me already. And I have people that have signed up for life with me. So again, this is a career choice. I, you know, I wanna just make sure you're making the right decision. It's right for your life. I wanna get to know you a little bit about yourself and to make sure it is right for you. Um, do you put limit orders on your selected trades after the first 15 minutes? No. Uh, Riddle, I personally don't put limit orders. I don't want the I don't want them to see my hand, okay? So I know where I'm getting at. I trade options. So it's, I'm watching the stock price and I have my finger clicked on the option chain and I can literally in one second get stopped out. I'm not going anywhere, I'm here. I look at the ECN book and I wanna make sure that I'm gonna put my email up here again. I wanna make sure that there's nobody big buying or selling on the ECN book when I'm looking to get out. A lot of times it saves me a lot of money. For example, if I'm going to sell and it's at my level and I see a huge buyer step in and I show you what this looks like if you're in the room, uh, if I see a big buyer step into the ring, I'm not going to sell. I'm like, oh, there's a big buyer. I'll, put my, my, I'll move it down just a tad. And that has saved me so much money. It's the ECN books. Again, that's where Goldman Sachs is. That's the dark pool. And this is how I learned how to trade. So there's my email again, if you want information, okay? So Mike, shoot me an email. There's my email up top. So do we cancel the app before joining the training pit? Yes, if you're joining the training pit and you are going to be there all day, you're not gonna be driving around somewhere, then you don't need the dark pool app. You're gonna get all the notifications right there all day long. Um, 
so yeah, absolutely. You don't need to have both. But if you're like Pinky, who is in the Java pit and she travels a lot. So she, she travels a week here, a week there, sometimes a couple months. She likes the app because while she's traveling or if you're out a lot during the day, you may want to have the app. But you can log in to the training pit and the Java pit through your phone. That is the best part. You can actually log in there. So that's, that's awesome. Okay, so what does it mean, huge, massive, and sneaky? Yeah, so it means pay attention. We're gonna have a big move in that stock or sector. It's unusual, yeah. Look, we have a lot of prints that come in, okay? We have a lot of prints that come in, and you know, you could get the block trade indicator, but you're not gonna know what is unusual and, and what we don't you know, pay attention to, just ignore. And it, doesn't depend, and it doesn't matter how much volume is on the stock. I don't use that as a criteria. I just use my experience. For example, if we normally get half a million prints on Bank of America every day, and it's a normal thing, I'm not gonna post that. But if there's a million or two million that comes in or five million, I'm gonna post that out. Pay attention. It's unusual and massive. This is a lot bigger than what usually comes in. Huge is big too. But it's not massive. Massive is like, oh my gosh, like this is so rare. This is really big for this. And you know what? You will get a handle on this and, and learn. It's you have to experience it. You know, the dark pool is something you have to watch for a little while, experience. And the best advice I could give you is paper trade. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna get things wrong. You know, but again, if you want to learn, I highly suggest you come into the, uh, the training pit. Um, the training pit starts, uh, I share my screen at 6 o'clock in the morning Eastern. I share my screen and you watch me mapping out the whispers and I do the whisper live. It's all day. It's seven days a week. You can go in there at any time, chat with people. Yeah, and the presentations are 11 o'clock. So let me just show you. Um, hold on. I'm going to show you the schedule. So I'm just going to go to the dark pool, member shot, class schedule. So here's an example of all the classes that we have. Oh, wait, this is for April. Uh, and then we start May right here. So tomorrow, uh, oh no, actually, tomorrow, nope, I have to go back. My bad, right here. Tomorrow I'm doing, um, oh wait a second. That's wrong, I'm doing the dark pool tomorrow. Yeah, here, April 29th, tomorrow. Introduction to the dark pool. Yeah, that's a really good one. You definitely wanna come in for that. Oh, that's March, sorry, I was in the wrong month. Gosh, so bad. Uh, every Wednesday I do bullish above, bearish below, or every other Wednesday. I do learn the basics of futures trading, um, Jane teaches about stocks, platforms, thinkorswim. Jay teaches thinkorswim. Uh, Paul, day trading using pivots, Camarillas. Um, he teaches ETFs versus mutual funds. Learn the basics of options coming up, part one, part two. Jane, importance of journaling trade. So Jane and Jay um, are on Thursdays together. You have two presentations. And then on Mondays, you got Paul and Jane. And then Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you got either Jay, Stephanie, me, every day at about 11. If you click on the actual um, class, it'll give you a little description and the time. And you know, then you can go, oops, I didn't mean to do that. And then you can go back to class schedule. Enteritis, exoditis, greed, you know, greed fear, downgrades, upgrades. Uh, Jane will teach about how to trade floats. Um, Paul did the oil industry yesterday, which was amazing. Really good presentation. Yeah, if you sign in now, you'll get this week's presentations, yesterday's and today's. Yeah, but if you sign in next week, you won't get this week's presentations. We only keep them there for that week. So keep that in mind. All right. So additionally, your traders do. Oh, yeah. So in the Java pit, that's right, my traders do presentations as well. When you come into the Java pit, in the room drive are tons of members' presentations, and they're phenomenal. Look, I mean, everybody's, 
everybody's so great in there. We have talented people that know about different strategies and they share their knowledge and we have that all in the room drive. So you, you have access to that immediately when you join the Java Pit. Okay, so holy cow and holy moly. Yeah, I put on, lot. they're all lottery tickets. Look, Vic, I only trade massive prints. I don't trade just regular prints, they're unusual. Massive or unusual. And I pick stuff that has great options. Yeah, I wanna make sure the option chain is liquid. I don't trade Tesla options. I don't trade Beyond or Roku. That's not my style, but I have traders in my room that do. And Ricky, every Wednesday, will do an options corner meeting. She teaches um, different option strategies. She's phenomenal. So you get extra option um, education in the Java pit. Um, so yes, you would need both the Dark Pool app and the Insights if you wanted a day trade and swing trade. Correct. So the dark pool app is the daily whispers. If you want to trade those, yeah, and, and get push notifications throughout the day of new activity coming in. That's the dark pool app. The insights is a video newsletter for a guy that's working most of the day, can't be in a trading room, can't be actively trading. You're, you're going to want the insights because that you'll be able to put on some really nice swing trades. You could just get a couple alerts throughout the day on stuff you're looking to trade and then enter your trades. But the insights is also good for traders that are in my room. Like Andrew loves them. He, he just, and he's in my room all day long and he loves the insights because again, we, we swing trade, we day trade. I mean, we just, we just trade them. You know, it's more about focusing on the massive institutional money flow, okay? These are the guys that are moving the market. Yeah, these are the guys doing that. So, you want to follow them. I can't move the market, but they can. Yeah. You can use the Android, Liz, at this time. It works. It just doesn't have push notifications. So all you have to do is you're going to have to just go to the app every once in a while. In the morning, check it more frequently. Go to the app. Go to the dark pool feed and just swipe. Do a swipe down. You know, just do your swipe down and, you know, you'll get the the latest prints last thing i did was i was net that's all every i'm sorry it's going to refresh and you will have push notifications very soon they are in the process of doing it for the android but it does work yeah so it's easy to check early volume pre-market on lightspeed lightspeed absolutely has it maybe you, your settings need to be changed go to a five minute chart you should be able to see um activity at four o'clock in the morning on the spy Absolutely on the spy. All right. Um, so Jerome, that's a very intense question that I really can't answer right now. It's way too uh, detailed uh, as far as the best strike price and month. It depends on the stock, the ATR, the daily chart. There's a lot of stuff. If you want to learn, come on into, into my room and we'll teach you that. Okay. Yeah. In great detail. Yeah, I can't just answer. I wish, I wish it was that easy that I could just answer it to you in one question and you use that formula for everything. But I just show you different examples in real time and how to choose the right options. Yep, so what trading platform do I use? So I wish there was one trading platform that did everything that I need, but there isn't. So I use um, Charles Schwab for the dark pool. I use DOS Trader Pro for my main platform. I use um, Thinkorswim for my pivots. I use Tastyworks for, the, I like the option chains on Tastyworks, I just like it. Again, I, I open a lot of software up in the morning and I'm very comfortable with what I use. You can choose whatever you want. I don't get paid by anybody to recommend any software. I am brutally honest and will tell you the pros and cons of each one. All right, because there are. And again, I wish there was one that just did everything. Uh, unfortunately, not for me. There isn't. Yeah, so Schwab has the ECN books. Correct, they do. Mm -hmm. All right. So go ahead. I'm going to end for now because uh, John J. the trader is waiting patiently to go on in the training pit. Um, but I want to just thank you again for coming out today. And go ahead. If I missed your question, shoot me an email. Okay, I will answer you. 
by the end of the day. I'm really quick, really quick typer. Um, and we can always make an appointment. Um, if you're interested in the job, pit, I'll ask you a couple questions to see if you're ready for it or not. And then as soon as I get your answers, we can set up an appointment and I can give you all the information. So thank you again and be patient. We will be having these upgrades coming and you are so welcome. Take care, everybody. Small at a bowl, took it all, let me fall. You knock, 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 knock me down.